what's going on what's going on welcome back welcome back to another live stream my name is marine x hopefully y'all are having a good time having a good day all of that good stuff man just sitting here kind of just chilling out you know what I'm saying decided i was like ah you know let's just kind of kick the goddamn door in and see what's going on with everybody and just see what it's got people got going on an early friday early evening <laughs> type of live stream bro you know what i'm saying we're making different things happen and for me personally the weekend is going to be getting started we got all sorts of stuff that's going to be getting going on let's talk some goddamn man stuff let's just come here have a good old time maybe have a drink have a good old smoke and all that good stuff man oh we maybe a little bit of everything so yeah man so my name is marine x if y'all have not heard of me before i'm literally super excited about this new knife drop that just tactile just dropped i'm sitting here reading about that as we pull it up um you know so i definitely am looking forward to maybe even snagging something from them talk about what i'm carrying today as well just overall just a kind of a chill type of day man let me know what you guys are carrying in your pockets what you have going on today is your day over are you still working uh and all that good stuff listen anything that i'm carrying today will be above my head the movie that i have on in the background way off in the cut is also above my head as well listen i love me some some ki killer clown from outer space you know what i'm saying so that's the movie i decided to kind of spin up today i was trying to think like what movie doesn't have some titties in it i think we talked about this last time and i i watched it and I think we're good to go. Okay. I think we're good to go. It got a 1980s version of a PG-13, which in 2024 timestamp would probably be rated goddamn G. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Bruce bro. It. Come on now, dog. It would be something like that. Come on, man. But by 80 standards, then you already know what the goddamn deal is. It says, I don't have any pockets, says the one and only Nicole. Well, you know, listen, it be like that sometimes. Maybe you're in swim trunks. I don't know. I don't know what the goddamn deal is. Folks that are already kicking the door in, I appreciate y'all making that stuff happen. Uh, Tater Dom is already here. Thanks for kicking the door in. Hopefully all is well with you. True Roger EDC in prep, and thanks for stopping by, and thanks for being a goddamn member. God, hey. We appreciate that, man. Stay angry. Lightning Boat is here kicking the doors in, kicking my hinges off once again, sir. Hopefully, hopefully you're having a good one overall. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the one and only doesn't have any pockets. Okay, I get that. We'll talk about what I'm carrying here in a second as well. Have you? Did you guys see the new release for Tactile Turn? Is that something that y'all are following? I, am I the only one that's kind of like, you know, I, I want to know exactly like where did they come from or Tactile Knife rather. You know, where did they come from? They, they've been coming up with all these new releases and kind of like all these new specials and stuff like that. They're, they're coming up with, how do they pronounce this shit? The, the Chubacara? <laughs> Listen, it's an aluminum scaled Magna Cut knife, which looks kind of freaking delicious. It, it looks kind of delicious. It is coming in at $249. I don't know how I feel about the price. I feel like the price would be better suited at $200 when it has aluminum scales. I know it has Magna Cut. I know the Magna Cut is 64 to 60, 63 to 64. But uh, I, I I guess I got to get my hands on it, man. $249. I love the different blade finishes. You can get tumbled or satin. If it were I, I would probably get tumbled. I just like the aggressive. Like, it looks like it's been churning through a bunch of rocks. Plus, a lot of times, if I don't clean my knives often, satin finishes just don't work out well for me. So I prefer tumble or stone washed if I had a choice. This has like this unique locking system. I think they had to pay for the trademark for the guy that has this locking system, but it has the little thumb stud. I think you can use this little, it's like a flipper, but not really. That's actually how you release the lock. I was checking it out today on their live stream. Uh, it does have titanium hardware, hardware, so, I think that's interesting. So I'm, I am, I will judge when I get my hands on this overall with the, uh, but I know that Tactile is trying to come up with some budget options. I don't know where, you know, $249 for budget. Hey, come on now, dog. Boosie, is it budget? Come on, man. I mean, in the world of Magna Cut with this type of heat treatment, I've done a tour of their facility before. Maybe this is the type of sauce that we're going to get for that, right? You know. Um, so I, I do find that to be pretty interesting. So that's something that 
I'm kind of looking forward to possibly getting my freaking phalanges on and checking out and seeing what all that stuff is going on as well. Uh, let's see. Let me know what you guys are carrying today. Let me know where you are in the country and all of that good stuff. Tommy is here. Thanks, for Tommy, for kicking the door in. Hopefully you're having a good evening or day or wherever the heck you are in the world. We appreciate that. Uh, KCR is here. It says, hey, y'all, happy Friday. Uh, what up, man? Thanks for kicking the door in. I have a Glock 17 in my bag of tricks, the one and only. Hey, listen, I am not a Glock boy. Not really. I prefer a J-frame, specifically from Smith & Wesson, but to each their own. Anybody ever seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space? You ever you ever jammed with that before? You know what I'm saying? It's really, it, it, it's kind of like something that I've always wanted to, I don't know. This is a re-release. I'm watching this on VHS. This is a re-release from 2000. So it came out in the 80s, but the VHS tape I have is from the, from 1999 2000 it was great seeing the previews on the vhs i was like oh my god there's some previews of movies that came out in the late 90s and hindsight being 2020 hindsight being 2020 you know what guys <sighs> come at me but i believe that the godzilla from 1998 was pretty freaking fantastic for what we what? have i mean listen Bro, what are you talking about man i just just kind of saw that preview pop up and it just made me think about that boom you know it wasn't it wasn't that bad. Chabakara, I appreciate that. I'm so bad at pronouncing stuff. Appreciate that. AG Russell Rancher, the Trustfire L2S, Essie Azula 2 in the Kawako ballpoint pen. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. If not, you know how it is sometimes. Happy Friday, says Chris. I try to keep a utility blade in my pocket every day, uh, presently carrying a DeWalt folder, but it's a pretty bulky. Any recommendations that aren't a wallet buster in that are slim what do you what is a wallet buster for you what's a good price point for you i've been in talks with crkt lately and i've been trying to figure out some some of their budget knife offerings and i like where their m16 series is i don't know about the blade still but i kind of like their m16 series i always recommend the crkt tuna or squid those are budget steals but if you're okay with learning how to sharpen knives those aren't horrible, and you can get those for normally less than 50 bucks. You can also look at the Civivi Praxis if you're okay with a bigger knife. If you want a smaller knife, you can look at the Civivi Mini Praxis. Both of those are normally below 40 bucks, um, and I would happily carry those. If you want something with a thumb stud, you can kind of look at the Civivi Elementum, the version number two. It has like a little thumb stud, a button, button lock, and all the other type of stuff, normally less than 65 bucks. So you got a lot of different options. Chris is here as well. Thanks for kicking the goddamn door in. In the pockets today, man. In the pockets today, we got to talk about the. Hold on. Matter of fact, let's get get you back up, camera. Let's get you back up. Okay. In the pockets today, we do have the Hogue Decker. Still trying to stick to what I talked about. Trying to stick to what I talk about, which is to actually carry my stuff more often. Not a man immediately abandon it because I get something new and pretty. So I've been carrying the Hogue deck. It's been since early January. So I'm kind of freaking proud of myself for that. <laughs> a little proud of myself for that, okay? Uh, also, we are carrying the Amalent BL50 flashlight. This is a 4,000 lumen max output flashlight. And 4,000 lumens is your turbo mode. You're gonna get that for a few seconds. It's not gonna be lasting forever on that thing. But it is nice to have this in your pocket, kind of at the ready, ready to rock and roll. So I'm a big fan of this flashlight. I wish I had a pocket clip, but the more I carry it, the more I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, I think I, I'm kind of getting over the fact that it doesn't have one. I did get it in the green colorway, and they they make it in a multitude of, a multitude of colors nowadays. So the LD70, actually, is this the LD70 or is this the BL? No, this, yeah, this is the BL50. It's so crazy because initially I had the LD70 and I was not very impressed by that thing. Now that thing is $60. If we look at the actual BL50, this thing is coming in at $70. So it's a little bit more expensive, but I like the fact that you can get that thermal mode of 30 to 600 lumens and you have the dual light source you have a uv light so if you need to check like covers or blankets at a hotel or something like that then you got stuff like that which is a nice to have as mentioned earlier i got it in this what color did i get this green color which is the one that i have i like it it's it's growing on me more and more okay as much as i at first at first wasn't a huge fan of it i'm starting to like it more and more so that's the 
So we got the Hogue Decker knife. We got the flashlight. Now, everything else has kind of been rounded off in a, pow in a, in a sling. We'll talk about that here in a second. I am rocking the Wingback Cash wallet. And as much as I like trying out other wallets and giving different things a whirl and stuff, I just find myself coming back and back to this wallet over and over. It is made by a company in the UK, made of a top grain leather. But it, it, I just like the fact that it's super simple, has a button closure, has my name on the front. Nothing super uh, crazy about this. I guess the thing, main thing I like about it, if you get a leather wallet, make sure it doesn't have any inner like linings inside that can give away. So like if it's rigid, then that's the first thing that gives away on a wallet over the years as a patina. So if you have something like this, this will last much more years than something that has like a rigid lining in the inside of it. So a big fan of that from the same company. So that the cash wallet I purchased myself the sling bag that i have they actually sent it out to me so this is their sling bag this is their 2.5 liter sling bag I, I guess they call it the sling bag I, I don't even know what they call it to be honest with you but this thing has actually been kind of growing on me a lot i like the fact that it's pretty easy to organize it everything i, I had to get rid of my nutsack double admin pouch to start to use this but it's it's like it folds over on top of itself like, okay, how convenient is that? I like that type of stuff. Let me move this keyboard out the way. It also has a lot of different features, just a lot of different pockets inside for you to carry anything that you want. So my cigar stuff, I got my multi-tool, which is the Leatherman Free P4. I have an, a secondary flashlight, which I mentioned before. If you carry two different flashlights on your purse to make sure that they don't both don't do the exact same thing. So this one here is more of a floodlight. Whereas the flashlight I have in my pocket today is more kind of a, has a spot beam to it. I have my pen, which is the Bastion copper pen. And I also have a secondary knife. This one has a safety on it. It's rare when I leave out the house without a knife, but the Kershaw leak is in here just in case. It has a 154 CM blade still. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, I like it a ton. And I like the fact it has a safety on it. This one's copper. Everything right here is like a copper or brass section. And then I got a Tide pin because I got fucking kids. You never know. Okay? Hey, bro, come on okay. now, dog. Tide pin in there. Come on, man. I'm always in dad mode, man. It has a zipper behind it. And the zipper back here, I keep some gum just in case. And I think that's it back there. And then it has on the other side another zipper pocket, which this zipper pocket here reveals a bunch of slip pockets which is i didn't think i would like them at first but i'm okay with it, it the stuff doesn't fall out right so you can kind of see the slipper pocket the uh, slip pockets in here i keep my ipod touch because i like to be able to go to the grocery store sometimes and purposely not bring my cell phone i brought i have my reinforced field notes one thing i've noticed about using field notes i've been trying to use them more and more lately is that the binding gives out really easy on field notes so i've started taping the sides of them like mine kind of get roughed up a little bit but i'm starting to tape the side of my field notes to try to keep the binding a little bit better together um so that's one thing that i kind of got to work through here's one issue i have with the sling though is as i have it folded on top of itself stuff does fall out if you forget that you don't have certain things clamped so that's one thing to think about but rarely do i have it folded on like this and then next to that i have a battery bank and a, the cord for that and a hank back here just in case i need to wipe uh, my glasses or something like that which i normally don't carry a hank i've been trying to force myself to carry one or whatever and i think that's about it there's a larger area in here as well so all sorts of just little areas for you to to keep different things that you may want to have i'm a big fan of the of the of the sling itself i like the fact that it is getting you that you know it's getting you over two liters and the crazy thing about this actual sling is that you can remove the strap and it becomes a big ass pouch. That's a bonus for me. Like, it's a bonus for me that you can just remove this freaking uh, strap. Oh, and I forgot the most important part. Oh my gosh, the most important part is their belt, their buckle is goaded. This is probably the one of the best buckles I've used on a sling bag in a long time. It's made of completely a metal. I don't know if it's aluminum or stainless or steel, but it's really, really well done buckle. And unlike every other sling bag that I have, this buckle, along with my Tom Tox, it makes it easy to take this bag off. As much as I love the Waterfeld sling, the Nutsack sling, those clips are so small, it's hard to get to them. This one's so big, I can take it off very easily. So, super goaded. 
I don't know. Me and Mrs. X might try to do a date night tonight. Perfect that my uh, cigar stuff fell out because we can just use this shit right now to <laughs> cut my cigar. I have a Benchmade cigar cutter, man. I use this stuff. Complete overkill, Boosie. I know, okay? Hey, bro, come on now. I know. Dog. You guys know I'm a goddamn sheep sometimes. Come on, okay? man. You know what I'm saying? So we will cut the little cigar. I'm going to have a agar Agarnosra <laughs> rare leaf reserve you guys know i don't neither do i not uh strive to get better at pronouncing stuff i don't even really care but i do appreciate this stick i like the way that the bands look we'll take off the first band we'll leave the second band on um so i'm a part of jrcigars.com their monthly subscription so i pay them 25 dollars a month they send me five or six sticks and then i just smoke them i normally write notes about them and if i decide to i buy a bundle or i will buy a box of them However, they're so decent uh, guillotine style cut. I think I need to sharpen this. Maybe I, I'll show you guys my knife maintenance area on a live stream because I've been using this thing for three years. And I don't think this is S30V steel in this cigar cutter. But I think I need to sharpen it because it's not giving me clean guillotine cuts like it should. Sometimes I'm starting to get fraying and I don't put that much of the tip. I mean, like just the tip, ladies, just the tip. I don't put that much of the tip in my guillotine cutter. So that's something that we have to we have to take a look at. And then we'll light this up with a this is a brass Zippo, but it has a butane insert. So all you freaking cigar snobs out there. We have both of those going as well. Let me guys know what you are carrying in the pocket, what you got going on today. Let me know. Also, let me know if you've seen uh, Killer Cons from outer space. Am I out of freaking butane? God damn it, pussy. Hey, man. bro. Come on now, dog. Switching cigars. Come okay. on, man. We're actually going to use a Texas. We'll use a Texas lighter instead, man. I got a, a Zippo butane insert. This has a bunch of the cities of Texas on it. Wanna, so it's a pretty nice little Zippo as well, man. So let me get this shit lit, lit real quick. Ladies, do me a favor. While I get this lit real quick and take a puff, please people, keep the people entertained, okay? I would appreciate that. Thank you very much, okay? <laughs> Goddamn uh, Fortress Fridays, man. K coming through. My name is Marine X. Hit that goddamn like button, man. Let's get this shit going. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Let's get it. Are you not All right, ladies, get down. Ladies, get off that pole real quick before you hurt yourselves. Go wash some titties. I might need you later. We never know. So what y'all got going on, man? How's your day going? Let's see what folks are carrying in the chat. Let me move some of my cigar stuff to get ready to put the stuff back where they belong. And all of that good stuff, man. Let us see what y'all got going on over there in the chat real quick. So let's see. Hit that like button. I appreciate you reminding the folks of that, Tater Dom coming through making that happen tater and chris coming through great moderator type stuff got the griptilian in my m it got it at m4 see look at this i learned so much about the griptilian it's not even funny because i own a mini griptilian in s30v i didn't know that back in the day i think they made it in what 154 cm or something like that i didn't know they made it at m4 benchmade just they are quick to freaking just whore out the same goddamn what design change that steel bro what are you talking about man <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They, they they are quick to do that shit. It also has a super tool in the pocket. 300 on the belt. Ah, oh, the super tool. I don't need it. I own the mutt. Uh, the free P4 gets almost every job done. And listen, I'm using my multi-tool for very simple stuff such as, uh, for instance, my daughter somehow, some way, you know, the two bolts that hold a toilet on top of the wax ring on a toilet. I don't know if you got anybody's handy, but, you know, a toilet is sitting on a wax ring and it's bolted to the floor. Somehow the bolt on one of my daughter's toilets started coming loose and the wax ring was almost exposed. And I was like, I'll change this later. Wax ring looks good. So I sat on the toilet using my own weight and I tightened the bolt with the, you know, the free P4 was in my pocket. Now it's harder to do with, you know, this aren't the best pliers in the world, but if you, if that's what you have on you and you're trying to knock the mission out, you use it for stuff like that. Fixing the mailbox, you know, I'm not, I'm not an HVAC. I'm not a tradesman. 
you know, I don't need to depend on my multi-tool every single day for that type of stuff. If I did, then a super tool or, you know, something with a bigger, beefier pliers on it uh, might be might be something I might need to do. Holland, the trusty 43X. OK, I got you. See all these different folks with different types of boom sticks and stuff like that. Delta, the DeWalt folding, CRKT, boom, by stick in the Leatherman rebar. Rebar is a uh, old school classic, man. They got rebars nowadays. A lot of times what Leatherman would do is sell the rebar paired with a like a K3 or something like that or a K2 knife. And you kind of get a, 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 you know, bang for the buck. Jeff Rogers, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. God, Boom, simple today. Way plus. He has the Arc Flex by o Olight. Uh, nondescript pen. Hey, listen, nondescript pen means you don't have to worry about your shit fucking growing legs. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro, come on now. You ain't got to worry about your shit growing legs, bro. Come on, man. Clip on the sheet for my belt, an SAK Field Master with a Rovivon 88 flashlight. It's super simple. You don't have like a wad of cash as well. That's like the, the carry he described is super simple. It kind of gets to the point, you know what I'm saying? It makes the stuff happen. Gerber Scout, a rebar as well. Number two for the rebar, two, uh, two counter for the rebar. A Kodiak Cub, field trip. I don't know what that is. Kodiak. Because I know Kodiak is like a camera, a park, a bear, like <laughs> a Kodiak Cub. Oh, it's a flashlight. It's a flashlight. I thought it was because it popped up right next to the, the Javelot. But this looks like the uh, I'm assuming this is a, the Cub. Well, one of these is the Cub. There's a bunch of them here. OK, I didn't even know Kodiak was a brand. Interesting. Let's save this real quick. Save that to my uh, discoveries. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. All right, so what else we got here? It, EDC doesn't change very much. Hey, listen, and that's what I'm trying to try my best to do, stay angry, is like I get a lot of, like, since this whole DECA was put in my pocket in January, I probably got 10 knives from companies, maybe a little bit less, because a lot of times when companies figure out that I'm not going to give them content because they gave me a knife, a lot of times they, don't want, they won't send me anything. But there are some companies that will send me some stuff. And I just try my best to just be like, eh, let me just... Uh, let me just hold on to it. What's the best multi-tool around 60 to $70? I would look into, well, I don't know about best. I can tell you multi-tools I've used around that mark. And I would hope that you would consider giving them a look. So for me, the one that pops up in my head first is the Leatherman Curl. Now, I don't know what you need your multi-tool to do. But if you're thinking about getting a Leatherman Curl, which is like $89, but you can wait for it to come on sale and it will drop down to the $70 mark, wait for it to go on sale like on Amazon, you might be able to look at something like that. It has the bit driver, it has an awl, it has scissors, file, all that type of stuff. If, <clears throat> if you really need it to be near that mark that you want, you can look at the Leatherman Bond. Um, now the thing about the Leatherman Bond, it is like that $59, $60 mark that you talked about earlier. But it's missing a couple of things that you can get if you just spend a little bit and you spend 10 more dollars, you can get the curl and the curl in includes the bit driver. And if you if you want to future proof your your multi tool, I would get the bit driver. The curl also includes the more goaded diamond file. And overall, I think it'd be a better experience with the curl versus the bond but if this is your price point this is, is, is your price point right i'm not going to try to convince you otherwise but if we look at the, the curl if you get this uh i guess it's really 20 more dollars but if you can wait this out and maybe snag this on a sale the t the tool set in my opinion is significantly better with that full size goaded file in there the bit driver and to be honest with you i would also look at clones not counterfeits not counterfeits clones so if you look at hvac budget on um youtube you look at max level edc they talk about clones all the time like wing uh, leather and wing uh, wave clones or curl clones look at some of those because they are coming out strong i don't have any experience with clones so i can't tell you the, which one to buy i could just tell you that the testing that they've done especially hvac budget he's an hvac technician so i kind of would you know lean heavy on his the double admin pocket dump. Let's get it. <laughs> the super secret club. Hey, Dr. Breezy, thanks for kicking a goddamn door in, man. 
We appreciate that, man. Uh, let's see. Greetings uh, for my birthday. You're in Amsterdam. He is in Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Man, I have memories from Amsterdam. Most of those I can't talk about nowadays. I mean, I'll, I'll talk to him about. I'll talk about him in the bedroom with Mrs. X, Boots. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I'll let her know what I did in Amsterdam. She might like that come shit. Come on, man. She might like that shit. Oh, also the open sea wallet, Jeff. Nice. Nice. I uh, got the blackout carry today for the real Chris Brown. He says he has the Ace Beam AA, the Kershaw Shuffle, and the Gerber Dime. Practical, easy to knock out, all that type of stuff, man. Which is goaded. I had to add tape on my field notes, um, sliding in and out of pocket, wears it out. See, I never thought about that, Piranha. I rarely carry field notes in my pocket, which is so crazy, though, because um, Three Rivers Manufacturing sent me a knife. Shout out to them. They sent me the, is it the, which one is the baby knife? Is it the Adam, the new, the, the, new, the nerd? They sent me the nerd. It's a nice little knife. But they also sent me a pocket protector. And I was like, you know, they were watching one of my live streams and they saw me talking about some stuff and they were like, hey, we want you to check this knife out. And we also heard that you freaking hate pocket protectors. So here's one. I was like, OK, very well. You freaking guys are goaded. They actually made me law, LOL, out loud, which I rarely freaking do. You know what I'm saying? But that was a a, a cool little gesture to them as well. Uh, Tide Pin <laughs> LOL says retired film medic. The Tide Pin came in handy uh, my last few years. It saved my brothers during. Oh, you know what i remember the days of inspections and when i was in the marine corps tied pins didn't exist or if we did we were not we didn't know about them here's here's my first note about this stick i've been running my mouth for eight minutes and it went out i don't like that shit. i don't like that shit. i don't like that shit. you should be able to stay lit while i run my mouth for freaking eight minutes i call this a five minute test it's not a real thing in cigars like this is not a real thing if someone smokes cigars but a lot of times i smoke cigars while i'm here cleaning a knife filming youtube video watching or i'm gonna be playing a video game on that tv back there or whatever and i may put the stick down to five minutes i want it to stay lit for freaking five minutes i don't care if it's burning itself out i don't care stay lit i don't have to relight my shit i think i'll grab the pico pouch and make a little kit to take with me wherever i go and it's only going to cost you less than 25 uh, bucks Rylan, which I think is great. Like, so you're spending less than 25 bucks. You got a very capable pouch. I'm looking at my Pico pouch right now. I miss you, man. We'll get you back in a rotation soon. Pico pouch is, is freaking goaded. It's freaking goaded. It's the Leatherman Skeletal for $75. The Leatherman Rebar for $80. The Leatherman Wingman for $70. And the Sidekick for $70. Uh, so I would avoid the, me personally, I have experience with both. And I would avoid the Wingman and the Sidekick. Unless they were given to you for free. That's it. Now, when it comes to the Skeletal, I like the Skeletal. If you need something really thin and not like super big and bulky, the Skeletal is great. I keep a Skeletal in the armrest of my truck and it may get touched once a month. So maybe I'm getting gluttonous. Maybe I should give my Skeletal away. It doesn't get touched very often. It's one of those things like I have train horns on my truck. Sometimes like the controller for my train horn comes loose. That's a flat. Uh, flathead screw so i use a slotted screwdriver skeletal's right there right but that's it it's not a lot of things that i'm tinkering with you know for that type of stuff um do you own do do your own search you might find out more yeah and if you're a veteran you can also shop on base leatherman prices on base on shopmyexchange.com are freaking egregious they're just so fantastic you know what i'm saying it's, it's the prices there are just they're uh remarkable let me see let me see field trip let me see what we see with the leatherman real quick so if we go here and we log into if you go to shopmyexchange.com if you're a vet and you can go here and you can find some fantastic prices on on um on leatherman multi-tools now the wingman sixty dollars. That's a it's something that's tempting. I still wouldn't do it. Oh, the Leatherman's charge TTI one hundred seventy five dollars tax free. The Leatherman mutt is back in production at Leatherman. They took it away for a while. Now it's back, and every all four variants of the Leatherman mutt is back. So if you want a mutt or if you need a mutt, there you go. You can also go to the website and get one. Super tool, like they got a lot of great options for you. 
So if you're able to shop on base as well, I would definitely check out shopmyexchange.com because not only is it tax free, look at this, this Leatherman bond's 54 bucks, so it's even cheaper than Amazon and it's ta tax free. So that might be something that you might want to look at. I really should have got the Leatherman charge G10 scales on base before it discontinued. Now I just deeply regret the fact that I don't own it. I super duper wish I had one and I don't. But it, you know, it is what it is. Maybe I'll pick one up on eBay or something like that. That sling bag looks tight, uh, packed with everything or anything. And you know what's so crazy, Bubba, is like, I don't like to overpack my stuff. I'm the type of person that will leave a pocket open. Like, I didn't on this one because it fits so good and it feels so great. So me and my wife are gonna be going to a comedy show in a couple of weeks. This is the type of sling that you take on a date night and you don't look like a weirdo. As much as I, like I say, I love the nut sack. I love the water felt. They're both wax canvas. Sometimes they're just like some, you know, if you're dressed nice and you got a wax canvas bag on, they're like, what the hell? Who is this guy? Is he, is he MacGyver? Is he about to go find the lost grail? Is he Indiana Jones? I get those looks sometimes, especially if you're dressed up. So it's nice to have a sling. This one's being made. I don't even know what it's made of. Some type of cotton, I'm assuming. I need to, listen, shame on me for not looking at the goddamn specs. Hey, Let's bro, see. come on now, dog. Come on, man. A couple of other tests I can do for these type of slings, though, is like how much smoke does it hold? Because I smoke around them, right? You know, if my freaking 11 month old throws up on it, how easy does it clean up? Shit like that. I took her to McDonald's today. She threw up on the bag, cleaned up like a goddamn champ. I'm proud of it, okay? <laughs> cleaned right the hell up. Uh, let's see. Just saying, as a miner, that shit looks good. Not gonna lie. What looks good? The smoke? Oh, man. Podcast is up in the building. Brandrew Scott. Appreciate you kicking the goddamn door in. Killer Clowns sh sh shred so hard. Have fun with that one. Let me tell you something, man. Killer Clowns is one of those cult classics. Like, if you ever had a movie that is like, you're trying to figure out is this movie going to be a rewatchable movie for the rest of our lives? This is one of those ones that's going to be a rewatchable movie. You know, another movie that I watch a lot of, a lot of people don't. Maximum Overdrive. Y'all ever seen that movie when uh, a, a, a comet passes Earth and the tail of the comet makes freaking machines, whether lawnmowers or 18 wheelers, just lose their mind and want to kill humans? Have y'all seen that? Maximum Overdrive is one of my rewatches. Any zombie movie you could think of, one of my freaking rewatches. You know what I'm saying? So I'm always, I always have like a set of a, a, amount of things that I watch that are straight rewatches that I check out quite often. But yeah, Killer Clowns is one of my faves. That's why I seeked it out on VHS. I wanted the graininess of a VCR. I have it on, I have it digitally as well. I paid for it. But listen, I don't know if Google will ever lose their contract with MGM. I think MGM holds, does MGM hold Killer Clowns? Yeah. Metro, yeah, MGM holds the the contract for uh holds the licensing for Killer Clowns. If Google ever falls out with them, I would lose my digital copy. I don't want that shit to happen. So, let's see. Good time uh good time to go live at the house getting th getting the last of the 3D printer set up. You know so was, so was, uh, what's so crazy Piranha is I have this 3D printer. I've used it one time. It's literally right behind me. It's a, um, I think it's an 8K or 12K. It's a nice 3D printer. I just haven't figured out a way to get it into my workflow. What I really want to use it for is I have a knife maintenance area where I clean, mostly clean knives. I don't have to sharpen my knives too, too often, but I clean my knives pretty often because if I use the same knife week after week after week, it gets tape gunk in there, glue in there, all sorts of shit. So I'll take the knife apart. Well, the, the knife maintenance area is on silicone. It functions just fine. But I wouldn't mind getting a 3D printed version up there, maybe eventually getting a wood version if I can ever freaking afford something like that. The silicone one was like 10 bucks and it works just fine. But uh, the 3D print is they have free print designs on printable.com and I could just print a 3D tray. So I, I kind of want to do that. Any good tips on how to pay attention? I have ADHD and autism. So what I would say is that I think that concentration and paying attention is a learned habit. I don't think that humans are born with it. I'm not a doctor. These are just my opinions. 
and it's something that you actively work on so a lot of things you can do is disconnect these are the things i do with my daughters disconnect from electronics i know right now you're watching me on stream so <laughs> i would be asking you to stop watching me but that's one thing um you know also do focusing exercises going outside taking walks whenever you go to a store leave your phone at home i know you're a minor so if you go to the store with your parents leave your phone at home maybe convince your mom or your dad to leave their phone at home and to pay attention to the prices of the groceries add them up mathematically in your head enjoy every process enjoy the process of shopping enjoy the process of walking outside like if you can pay attention to other things in your life i think it'll help pay attention to the mandatory things in life so i like to do that all the time I go to a grocery store with no cell phone and I know I have a budget and I'm like walking around the store doing the math to see are the items in my cart going over my budget that forces me to pay attention to my shopping. Now, you know, does it work? I don't fucking know. I don't know, Boosie. Maybe I'm hey, bro, come maybe on I'm now, talking bro. out my ass, okay? Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? It, maybe I'm completely wrong. Sean is here as well. Thanks for kicking the door. And let me know, guys, if you're finding me through the actual, um, if you're finding me through YouTube shorts, put a one in the chat. If you've never seen my freaking ugly face before, put a one in the chat. If this is the first time you ever discovered me, I appreciate you kicking the door. And thanks for liking the stream as well. Bubba Medic is here. Rainy Cali Delta. Rain ain't bad weather. Fishing in the Delta. You know, I said the proper stranded back to the dock. That must be some lyrics. You, you threw me off, sir. I didn't read your comment before I threw it on the screen happy effing friday say hey appreciate you sergio cruz is coming through man uh let's see what up folks hey sucker free is here as well fuck Ducey is here everybody kicking the door in favorite peasant cigar my favorite peasant cigar has to be huh good question let's see um i think jrcigars.com has let me log in real quick wait a minute that's not what i wanted to do let's log into j so jrcigars.com is what i use for my actual cigar service and one of my favorite peasant level cigars i would say is anything factory smokes by drew estate so if we look here factory smokes by drew estate you can get 25 for 43 dollars. that's coming out in less than two dollars a stick i buy those all the time you can also get um I would consider Undercrown Shade a budget banger as well. If you're getting 10 sticks for $44, I mean, that's coming at about four and some change per stick. So I like stuff from Drew Estates. Both of those cigars are from Drew Estates, the cigar company. Um, another factory smoke, you get a bundle of 20 for $39. That's about $2. So it's up to you. If you want to spend big, big bucks on something from Drew Estates, which I like to do every now and again, Tabaka Especial is probably my favorite cigars from Drew Estates. This is a bundle of 24 for $186. That just lets you know that this is a very well-made stick. It has a Connecticut shade, fantastic flavor to it. Maple syrup, this type of shit gets grandpa excited. So peasant level, yeah, maybe not so much. But if you know you get it, you get it, is that something that you might enjoy? Yeah, it is. It is something that I think is something that's enjoyable as well. Dr. Breezy puts a one in the chat. You're right, sir. I've seen your freaking ugly mug here before, sir. Okay. <laughs> Marine X, let these great folks at home. What is a dessert princess? I don't know if you meant desert princess. No, that's Desert Princess. Dessert has two S's. Okay. What is a dessert or Desert Princess? I don't know. I don't I don't know if I understand your question, Big Drink. Big Drink, I like your name though. Rephrase or send it to me again. Maybe I'm just missing something. Uh maybe I'm missing something. It says we we use Clorox grout bleach pens for the white shirts captain specific and then they found out then they found the tide pins yeah back in the day we used to have chinese field days we used to have the inspections a lot of our uniforms in the marines don't pertain to anything white so that was kind of a saving grace for us our alphas are you know khaki colored blouse and then the, the blouse on top the jacket on top is green so a little bit easier to hide stains but when you got a drill instructor in your face or a staff sergeant in your face inspecting you there they normally can find some stuff okay they normally can find some stuff. 
Uh, I buy cheap. Wearing an Invicta Pro Dive watch is an automatic Casio double uh, uh, W seven three five vibration alarm. Victorinox range grip. I don't think I've heard of that specific one. Is that a SAK or is that some other type of Victorinox? You know what I just got for my automatic watch? Um, what I just got? I got this rotating thing. Basically, what it does is you put your automatic watch inside. And every 10 minutes, or you can make it go as often as every six minutes, it turns the watch for you. It turns the watch for you. I don't know. I'm, I'm testing it out. We'll see, you know, how I feel about it. Let me see if I can look it up without having to get up and actually go grab it. Because I, I wasn't sure um, how I will feel about it, but it's actually really aesthetically pleasing. That's one thing. So I'm kind of like, it's an automatic watch winder rotator. And so the company, you know, shout out to them. They reached out to me to send one out to me. And I said, I would give it a whirl. And if I like it, I'll show it on the channel. And this is the one that they sent out to me. And I've been testing it out for like a week. This thing is very interesting. Okay. It will rotate your watch every 10 minutes or so working book more often. See this number right here, 650, 750, those are seconds. So if you take, you know, you know, take these numbers and divide them by 60, that's how many minutes it will, um, how many minutes it will go. And it does it every 12 hours and it takes a 12 hour break. So, you know, I think that's pretty cool. And it sits on your desk. You can or you sit it wherever the hell you want. It comes in multiple colors. I was like, you know, you guys are kind of killing the game. Now they did send me in like this super bright orange. Beggars can't be choosers, even though I didn't beg for it. They, I would have preferred green they sent it to me in this burnt orange color it's a pop of color on my desk now you can also do stuff like this see how these are daisy chained together so if you buy multiple you can literally plug one into shore power plug one into the wall and then daisy chain into other ones so you don't have multiple cords coming from the wall that's pretty freaking genius okay and or you can just buy their bigger ones which is like this i, I don't know about 360 dollars but you know, this is gonna wind multiple watches at once. So that might be something that also has like a fingerprint lock to keep people from going inside. I I don't know how I feel about it yet. We'll we'll see how it goes. And uh though they are dope, you got the three daisy chain. Look at Dr. Breezy, sir. You already are you I should have known that you had that goddamn sauce, man. I should have knew it. I should have known it. I should have knew you had that sauce, man. I don't know if I would. I think I wouldn't mind trying to daisy chain them together. It does look kind of dope, man. You know? Um. It says, it's, he, Chris says, it's kind of odd, but I can watch Rounders almost on repeat. Rounders, that's a movie, right? So Rounders, shame on me for not knowing what it is off the top of my head. Field trip. Rounders, oh, that's from 1998. Is that a young um, Matt Damon? I think so. I don't think I've ever seen this movie. So it's rated R. <laughs> I hope it has gratuitous sex and violence in there, hey, sir. Hey, bro, come on now. Okay. Dog. Come on, man. How did it get that rated R? Does it have the gratuitous sex and violence in there? I hey, appreciate that, man. I'm going to put this on my watch list. Appreciate you for pointing that out to me. It's a drama-filled underground world of high-stakes poker. Oh, yeah, that's something I will watch. That's something I will watch. Okay. Appreciate you for pointing that out. We also says, Macintosh is here. Thanks for kicking the door in. It says, um, Pinching the broccoli since here. Hold on. So some of, so some of your favorite childhood movies are Rambo 3, Rocky. So you can, okay. Mission Impossible, U.S. Marshals. It's so crazy because I get the Fugitive and U.S. Marshals grossly confused because they have the same lead actor, what, Tommy Lee, right? Passenger 57, goaded. These are all the great movies before Wesley stopped paying his goddamn bills. Is it not right? My uh, The man cave's being invaded. Don't worry, guys. That's my garage opening. It's, it's being invaded. Don't you worry. But those are some of like the great freaking movies before... Oh, let me turn me down real quick. Before he stopped paying his taxes and got freaking sent up the river for a while. 
Uh, let's see. I've been here <clears throat> under another name. What, what name were you here before, man? Thanks for coming back. And nonetheless, appreciate you kicking the door in. I got the Pro Diver for $45 a few years back. They basically half off, and it's my first automatic, so I feel safe and got it. Okay, got you. Uh, Semper Five, thanks for kicking the goddamn door in, man. Appreciate you doing the live streams as well. If you guys got like like gameplay content and stuff like that, go check out Semper, man. Drop your link to your channel in here, man. We would appreciate. My bad. Mrs. X walked through. I had to see that ass for a second. You already know what the goddamn deal is, okay? Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. Mrs. X comes through. I got I to gotta look at that ass real quick, bro. Like, if, if she makes an appearance, sometimes you just got to. Have y'all seen Mrs. X in live and living color? <laughs> I don't care what you got going on. Because if she graces your presence in real life you, you sometimes you got to just kind of stop what the fuck you're doing and just make some stuff happen okay put a goddamn attaboy in the chat because mrs x comes through making the shit happen man put a goddamn attaboy in the chat man put a goddamn attaboy in the chat okay let me know i got a good goddamn head on my shoulder spam that goddamn applause x okay when mrs x comes by i gotta stop what i'm doing Okay, she can invade the man cave and all that good stuff. It is totally allowed, totally permissible, and all that good stuff. And you know what makes it worse? You know she hang, she she comes through. All the broads she hang out with, all of them are freaking good looking. I'm mean, just a, a flock of y'all, a flock of y'all broads. Just all y'all look good. And yeah, she's okay with me saying broad. I just talk different. Okay, it's so crazy. Uh, let's see, they are dope. I got the three Daisy chain. Yeah, I think they're great, man. Uh, let's see. I backed the Naps Lander 3 Kickstarter recently. Going to be my first nice flipper. Now, Naps, listen. So, Ben over there at Naps, man, I've been kind of talking to him lately. And I want to see if I can maybe check out some of their stuff. I've only checked it out at Blade Shows. I've never actually, like, owned one. And so, you know, Ryland's talking about possibly checking out the Lander 3. Is this the one that you're talking about? Is this, it was on Kickstarter and I guess now it's on a, oh, they give you a CAD download. That's freaking awesome. So if you have a 3D printer, you could just print it off and put your own scales on there. That's dope. I can appreciate shit like that. Um, so this looks like it's using, wait, you said it's a flipper. This is a crossbar lock. So they coming out with another, another version. Yeah, let me know. 2.75 inch blade. It's S35VM blade steel. What's the HRC on here? Hardness level. Uh, it's not jumping out at me. But it looks interesting. Yeah, let me know. I wish I got the big one now. Great freaking movie. Absolutely, man. Hey, yeah, make sure y'all follow him. I see the link you dropped in there. Zyzaw a few times. Ah, okay, I got you, man. Had to get a new account. You're not... You're not banavating, are you? Did you two bounce your ass up out of here? Did they, did they bounce you? Ah! <laughs> did you two bounce you up out of here and you're back, man? No, I'm glad you're back, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming to seek me out again, even after changing accounts. So sometimes I use my second account on YouTube, and there's just like a lot of channels. I'd be like, oh, my God. I watch this on my other channel. I can't remember the name of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what did I just join during? You must have been, you must have joined when the ladies were up there, man. Appreciate you kicking the goddamn door. And have you ever heard of a knife brand called Tatcom? Yeah. Um, hope please. Let me see something. All right, so I think this is a TACCOM knife. Let me, let me, field trip. Let me look this shit up. Yeah, this is a TACCOM knife. So this is the TACCOM, is this the Bulldog? I don't know. I, I might be mistaken. So TACCOM reached out to me, um, I don't know, maybe three months ago. And they said, hey, we're working with Best Tech. 
and we are trying to come out with a new line of OTF knives. Do you own one? I said, I've never really been interested in them. I don't want the hardware to, listen, this is what I would hate. That. The reason I never owned an OTF knife, OTF stands for out the front, push a button, knife comes out the front. The reason I never owned an OTF knife is because I would hate to have my hand on a piece of drywall or a piece of uh, some cardboard or fixing something. I go to grab this knife, it misfires, it doesn't work or the blade is not working properly. Like I just never thought that OTF knives can be hard used, if that makes sense. Then I saw Zach in the wild, he checked one out from another company and he was hard using. I was like, okay, maybe these are worth it. Maybe this is something that I could check out. So they sent me the Bulldog, they sent it to me in the sheep. Now I think they also produce it in um, drop point, but they sent it to me in the sheep foot, which I don't own many knives with sheep foot. So that kind of gives me an opportunity to kind of check it out. What is this blade steel? It's M390. So M390 blade steel. It's uh, it hasn't been used very much. Well, mine looks freaking brand damn near brand new. I'm, I'm, I don't like the front and try to pretend like it. Blade hardness is only 59 to 61. That's not a horrible thing, but for the price point that they're asking for, which is about $230, I think that's a hard ass. I don't know yet. I mean, it just feels a little high to me. Maybe I'm mistaken. Here's what the it looks like on their website. So it is coming through with the, yeah, you can get it in two different blades. You can get it in drop point or you can, I like the way it looks in sheep foot a little bit better, to be honest with you. Um, so you are getting the aluminum body. You're getting stainless steel. See, this is the thing, $230. Give me some titanium pocket clip, right? Give me some, uh, What I like the blade finish. So it is, uh, it is, uh, OEM by Best Tech. Best Tech makes some decent knives. So I've this is this is my first experience with them. Hopefully the pricing comes down. The CNC machining on the actual blade itself is uh, delicious. This pattern, oh my god, this shit gets Grandpa excited. This shit just makes me want to caress it like his goddamn Mrs. Uh, Mrs. X's fucking ass, bro. Like oh my god. Come on, man. Have you seen Mrs. X ass? Do we need to pull her back? <laughs> oh, man. But no. So, you know, so this is a decent knife. A decent knife Um, for the feel. I don't know about the uses because I've only used it around the house. I have a major project coming up in my powder room. So the powder room, I have to remove all the wallpaper the 1990s wallpaper which is just you can do that with water i'm gonna have to be making cuts to drywall and replacing some cuts and they have an inlay mirror so i have to put in new new drywall in the place where the mirror is located so i'm gonna use this knife for that project can i cut drywall can it do small cuts for like i'm gonna be cutting tile it can't cut tile obviously but can it help me with like grout lines can it help like can it be used in that project right it's a powder bathroom. I expect for it to take me a weekend to knock it out. And I don't think I'll be grabbing a knife very often. But if I do grab a knife, that's what's going to be in my pocket for that. So we'll see how it goes. So uh, let's see. I meant to say folder. Got you. Got you. Okay. Got you. Um, look at the Asher Spyro Warncliffe. Good knives. They are good. So I think I saw Tri-State talking about one of theirs. Maybe I'm tripping. Field trip. Let's see. Asher Spyro. Warning. Let's look it up. Ugh. See what we got real quick, man. So is it a crossbar? Is that what it is? Ooh, sir. <laughs> the, this first picture is incredible. Good job. Oh, my gosh. It just shows me how beautiful the blade is. The scales look really good. This is a great first picture. 95 bucks. Listen to this. Look look at the comparison for this, guys. Listen to this. This is also M390 blade steel. This is also a sheep a sheep's foot, just like I just showed you with this TACCOM. This is $95. Now, I understand an OTF has way more machining. It has way more mechanisms that have that could fail. I understand all that. But if you're really looking at the blade steel and the scales, this is G10, so aluminum may cost more. But if you're really just chasing the M390, then you might want to look at something like this, right? I don't know what the hardness is of this, and it's fucking sold out, so that might be a dilemma as well. I love the aggressive. This is a nice looking knife. This is a nice looking knife. I mean, that's fine. It has a big belly on it. God damn. 
Um, yeah, I like the way this knife looks. I don't know. I mean, the price, I don't have a direct comparison in my head for M390 crossbar style. So $95 feels right, but I don't have a direct comparison. It is there. It's left hand friendly. That's a good thing if you're a lefty. You know what I'm saying? So that's some stuff to take a look at as well. Okay, so Victorinot's Ranger Grip is a line of multi-tools, mainly only one-hand opening blades. Okay, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. You recently won the TACCOM Grunt. I'm not familiar with the brand, so I was curious about their reputation. Appreciate it. Yeah, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to, they have a sister company that they're trying to disassociate themselves from. So their sister company is called, um, I think it's called, it starts with a T. Let me, let me see, field trip. All right, TACCOM started in 2023. Um, in the beginning, our names was TK Pro. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what they changed it, but they have another line of knives, which are way more budget friendly. So they want TACCOM to be their, their like, higher end knives and then they have a lower grade of knives tack knives wait yeah tack knives is their other brand i think let's look that up real quick yeah so uh tack com is the higher quote unquote higher end and in tack com this is all their budget shit okay so if that makes sense i've never heard of either one until they reached out to me though so and you see they sell tack com on tack knives website so Oh, they sell EDC Sharpies. Yay. Freaking, I, I, you know, I didn't think I needed one until today. Hey, but yes. bro, come on now, dog. Give me two. Come on, man. Oh, man. So, yeah, it looks like they sell all sorts of stuff as well. Best Tech does some good knives as well. They do do some, uh, some great knives. And they also, because Best Tech has the facilities, they OEM for a lot of companies where... It, so if you know let's just say for instance i was a thousand air right let's just say i'm a thousand air. i got a, i got a, a bunch of money laying around and i want to design a knife obviously here in my man cave i can't start manufacturing some fucking knives so maybe i reach out to best tech and we come in some type of collaboration agreement i pay a portion of their overhead some type of design fee some type of fee where they get a cut of every knife where i buy them in wholesale or whatever and i write contracts for a living so i'm just rattling shit off the top of my head and I pay them either a fee for them to do a, a slight a slate of knives or if they think I'm going to be insanely successful because I have a proven record, maybe they'll just do it and then they get a cut of each knife or whatever. Similar to what other companies such as like um, was it Divio, D.I.V.O., uh, CDC, those type of companies, they do that type of stuff. And then they come out with great products. It's their own design, but they don't have to worry about the manufacturing. It actually makes a lot of sense, right? Makes a lot of sense. So what else we got here? It's so crazy because, oh, I didn't even mention a watch. I didn't even mention a freaking watch for today, which is, and I want to show you this freaking rotating thing now that I think about it. Uh, ladies, do me a favor real quick. Keep them entertained while I grab this goddamn watch to rotate. Appreciate that, man. Hey, get off that goddamn pole. Get off that pole before you hurt yourself. As I was talking about earlier, this freaking watch rotator thing is, here's what it looks like here. So the full thing in your face. The thing I like about it is, it is, okay, aesthetically it looks pretty nice, okay? So in there now I have a um, Ben Roos field watch. It's a Vietnam reissue. It's a nice watch, but it's a watch I want to take good care of. It's a $600 watch. It has a Swiss automatic movement. I don't wear it as often as I should. So you can put it in this device. The very back has it so you can use shore power, which means you can plug it up. Or you can do something like throw some double A's in here, which let's see if I can make it work right now. So throw a couple of double A's in here. 
yes, I'm a dad. I keep fucking batteries just laying I mean, around, okay? Bro, come on now, dog. But look, it rotates. Come on, man. So if you have a mechanical watch, this thing will rotate depending on the frequency that you want. It will rotate how uh it will rotate either clockwise and counterclockwise. So it has different rotate settings. Or it also has like a, a, a mechanism that where it kind of just goes up and down. Um, and you can determine how often you want it to rotate. So I have mine set to rotate every 10 minutes. You can make it go all the way down to like every six minutes. And it rotates for about a minute, minute and a half. Then it stops. It does this every 10 minutes or however, whatever your increments for 12 hours. At the end of 12 hours, it stops and doesn't do it for 12 hours. So if you're running this on battery, it saves your battery for 12 hours a day. If it's, you know, if it's, you know, whatever. So it's nice to leave this on your desk. I'm getting dizzy looking at the shit, but it's nice to leave this on your desk. Um, uh, it's kind of a nice talking piece, display piece, but it's also going to ensure that your mechanical watches are being well maintained. So I have something like here, the VAR A12 Dirty Dozen. This has a Swiss automatic movement, which gets grandpa excited. You can see the movement through the back of the case back here. This is one of my favorite watches. But, you know, when I don't wear this, the, the reserve power is not a lot. So this type of device, whenever I, if I were to swap these out, I could easily just throw this in there and keep it going. This thing's been going for a good minute. So something to think about. Um, I don't know, man. I don't want to link them up. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can Google it and go buy you one if you want to. I don't want to link it up until I really figure out what I don't like about it. Like for one, for instance, if you put the watch in here upright, right after it's done rotating it doesn't go back upright it's a small first world problem but this whole box is a first world problem right so this time it did go back upright so look i put it in here upright and when i rotated it it finished upright but the very first few times i used it it would finish sometimes the 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 indices or the numbers would be all sorts of fucking ways. And I was just like, you know, I, I want it to be aesthetically pleasing. I, if I'm spending seventy five hundred dollars, however much this shit costs, I want it to, to finish with the numbers facing in the correct direction. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm thinking too hard about it, but it's something I think about as well. So I don't know if I want to link it up or whatever, but it might be something if you want to check it out, man. You're more than welcome to do that as well. Um, hmm. The real avid firearm maintenance multi-tools are nice. Check them out. Yeah, I got one. I got like two or three of them. So the two toolboxes behind me, the white, the white Husky one is a 60. No, the white one's a 72 inch. That's where my tools are. So I do a lot of shit around my house. I do a lot of DIY on my truck, my house, and I'll fix shit. Toilets break. I'm going to try to fix the shit. I ain't calling no fucking plumber. Eventually, if I don't know what I'm doing, I'll call them, right? The black toolbox is full of stuff like electronics. So uh, YouTube cameras and also things that I tinker with, such as EDC knives and stuff. But it also has all my firearm maintenance stuff, oils, multi-tools, uh, cleaning kits for ARs. So the rods and stuff for that. So that's the two different toolboxes kind of serve different purposes and stuff like that. That might be a little bit overkill for a $25 Casio. Absolutely, man. Okay. <laughs> I spent $25 on my Timex Scout, and I spent $75 on the display case. You freaking. Okay. Hey, listen, I'm not going to judge you, man. You know what I'm saying? If, if you want to spend your duck is that way, bruh. Listen. I spent my money on a goddamn $6,000 trunk clock that sits on my fucking desk, hey, okay? Bro, come on now, dog. You know, it, it, listen. Come on, man. So I, I will not judge you on how you decide Louis Vatten, <laughs> Louis Vatten, <laughs> Louis Vuitton trunk clock, man. And you know what's so crazy? It's a autumn, it's a, it's a mechanical actual clock. And I've had it for, I think, three years maybe three or four years now and the fucking battery has gone out this thing is fifty seven hundred dollars plus tax of course uh congratulations free shipping yeah 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 
the way they label it is a, a complimentary carbon effective delivery or collect and store. Bruh, free shipping is what it fucking says, okay? This sits on my desk. It's aesthetically pleasing. It brings me joy. I fucking like it, okay? Pound sand. I don't care. Fifty seven it's fifty seven hundred dollars. The fucking battery goes out. I call Louis Vuitton. I'm like, hey, according to your website, it says that you guys are supposed to fix it. Otherwise, I can void a fucking warranty, which I don't know what a warrant. The only thing that could be under warranty for this thing is the movement. There's nothing else that would be under warranty, right? So how much is it to get the battery? Well, you got to come in. What? So to get the to get a quote for the battery, I have to come in. Although we're on the phone together. Come on, man. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do soon is get this fucking thing fixed. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that thing goes. It's just been sitting there wishing that it would work. Uh, let's see. Yo, if you're looking for a real knife, look at my work. I'm a French blacksmith knife maker piece. All right. <laughs> you got a, like a link or a name of a company or a instagram or something like that you know what i'm saying like let me let me know so that i can check out that type of work as well it's so crazy because as these companies are more and more coming out with different stuff my total mentality when it comes to knives and edc stuff are slowly starting to shift and i say slowly because i used to be super infatuated with just kind of having like the best of the best they're giving away a oh my god so i like to go to knifenews.com and this is where i kind of see new knives that are coming out they're giving away a civivi elementum too this seems a little crummy give me your email you might win a civivi like dude i listen i'm not knocking no one's budget but that's not a super expensive knife okay but you see tactile's new knife is leaving the front page of knifenews.com this is where i like to come and just kind of just think about am i willing to spend some fucking money on anything new and most of the time like no i'm fucking good i don't want to okay the savivi star flare looks interesting There are some knives that can't that are coming out soon that I think are very interesting. One of them is the Vodsti Tala. We'll talk about that. And I didn't even know about the Savivi Star Flare. Uh, let's see. Okay. It looks like a Kershaw leak a little bit. It, like a, it, it kind of gives me Kershaw leak vibes. I don't know. What do you guys think? Take a look at that blade shape. I want you to just memorize it. Get it in your head. Okay. You guys got that memorized? Okay. Now, look at this. So here's a Kershaw leak. I don't know, man. This is the Kershaw leak 154 CM blade steel made in the USA. Massive pocket clip. Probably one of the thing I don't like. Thing I like least about this. But other than that, I like the knife overall. Obviously, I fucking own it, and it's nearby, right? But this is the Kershaw leak. Now let's go back to the Savivi Star Flare. They look pretty similar, do they not? I don't know, man. So uh let's see so it's their their version of a warning 3.2 inches for the blade length and how much is it going to cost okay so it's a little bit more it's, it costs a little bit more than the kershaw leak i think the kershaw leak's like 79 dollars. maybe somebody in chat let me know how much the kershaw leak is so 85 dollars. you're getting a nitro v blade i don't know a lot about nitro v i don't how does nitro v compare with 154 cm similar curve says yeah I mean, it's like a similar curve. I mean, you know, it just, that was the vibes that it gave me. So let's see. Do they have a HRC on their website? Are they OK, so they say HRC is between 59 and 61. Oh, let me mute myself. So they're saying for a 59 and 61, the clip is way better. OK, on this one. Let me see. What does this clip look like? I like the aesthetics of it. Look at the CNC machining on there. What is also oh, it's an aluminum scale. So the one that I have in my pocket is a copper scale knife. Copper's antimicrobial. So if that's important to you, then you can think about that. It's not going to hold germs like this knife will. Aluminum scratches up pretty easily. So does kind of my copper does too, though. My uh, the knife this leak is going to patina though. So if patina is important to you, and then this kind of looks like baby poop green. You know, so maybe hopefully they come out with some other colors. And obviously this is a button lock and the Kershaw leak is a liner lock. So, I mean, they are comparable blade shapes, but they are pretty different knives. But the Vodsti Tala is going to be coming out soon as well, man. And 
I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot. I like the way the blade looks. This looks like a perfect beater knife. 14C28N is my favorite beater steel. It's easy to sharpen. It holds a great working edge. It doesn't hold a factory edge really well. So the factory edge is the edge that may come in and you're cutting paper towels and paper and shit like that. That wears away kind of quick on 14C28N, but the working edge, meaning it can still work. It can still do utility cuts. It can still cut through cardboard. It's not dull, but it's not cutting through paper towel. That's a good working edge. $72 for this thing, crossbar lock. I think it looks pretty good and it has this thumb this thumb plate ver versus a thumb stud it's actually oh, i kind of like the way this shit looks I'm not gonna lie to you i actually kind of like this this is an s for me that that that's a vivi i don't know about that and this shit already sold out so i know it came out like two weeks ago oh it's pre oh it's a pre-order okay i'm about to say so they got that and then let's see i thought they had AJ Russell's knives power bar gets another variation lock. I don't like this big ass. Listen, I know you're proud of your of your knife design, but your logo is too fucking big, bro. I've never even heard of this knife. But this logo, listen, bro. I feel like I am got somebody else's goddamn dick in my pocket, hey, man. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Man. Come on, man. Do we go together, AG Russell? Are we a couple? Like, do I have to have a tramp stamp in my right goddamn pocket, sir? Like, goodness gracious. Oh my God. But the knife is really nice. Not, not I'm past the freaking boyfriend, girlfriend talk. The knife looks aesthetically pleasing. G10 scales, it looks like it either has stainless steel or titanium at the top of the G10 scales. Let me look at the specs real quick, man. Uh, D, ugh, D2 steel. Okay. G10 scales. I guess that must be stainless steel because if that was if that was titanium at the very top right here, they would call that out. They would brag about it, but they're not. I mean, uh, pocket clip looks decent. I it's left hand friendly. Is it $135 because of the designer? Why is this $135 for D2? Is their heat treatment really good? Can somebody tell me? Somebody let me know. Because um, this one is not giving me $135 vibes, especially if I got to be a goddamn, uh, have a tramp stamp in my goddamn pocket. Okay? What? If I have to have that in there. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Maybe it's not for me. Okay. So it's just something to think about, man. A lot of times my mentality towards these knives and everything that's coming out on the market. Uh, shout out to freaking uh shout out to Killer Clowns, man. They finally infiltrated the goddamn tent, man. Shout out to Killer Clowns. But uh it, it's something that I think about, man. It's just like, is any of this stuff impressing me? Is there something I need to check out? But can you take a hammer to the spine for that last knife? I don't know, man any of the knives we just looked at to be honest with you the one that the most the one that you might be able to do it with is probably the ag russell if we're looking at all of them but to be honest with you i think i would prefer to take a a, a, a log to the back of this uh vod steed of the tala this looks like more of a beater knife because of the blade shape and just the way it's all aligned together i would dare not hit this with a fucking knife it would be or with a log that thing would be uh dead in real life i don't know man if it's less than a hundred dollars i'm willing to do all sorts of stupid shit with my knives me personally that's just me less than a hundred dollars i'm willing to do a lot of stupid shit with my knives so there's a whole lot out there for 135 dollars yeah i would concur with that i mean to be honest with you the the knife that i have in my pocket the knife I have in my pocket is the Hogue Decca. Now, this is like $180-ish, right? Links in the description. <laughs> Just in case you're fucking wondering, Boosie. I'm just hey, saying, bro, okay. come on now, dog. <laughs> come on, man. Uh, the Hogue Decca, man, this has a CPM 20 CV blade still. And I need to I really need to clean this shit, man. It's, anyway, 20 CV blade still on this thing. And I would be willing to save my money and get these beautiful scales 
get this aggressive blade shape get the coating and have a better blade still a better hrc level than that and i don't have to be fucking hoes boyfriend okay because of that goddamn label on the side that's just me though that's just me now the um i don't know but that's if if you need a knife now you really like ag russell you really like the way that knife looks then yeah go for it then go for it right but that's probably not for me though this one here is just oh it's getting so much better i when i first got this knife a year and a half ago i thought the action was so bad i've been carrying this in my pocket now since january and i have been working the detent i have been working the action and it is so good now i can reverse flick it i can do all sorts of stuff with this thing now I'm so proud of myself. Give me a goddamn attaboy in the chat, man. Give me an attaboy in the chat. Mostly carrying the same fucking knife since January. I say mostly, okay? It's in my knife every, it's in my pocket every week. If it's seven day week, it's in my pocket for five of them. A couple of days, I might try something different, okay? No longer for sheepdog. No sheepdog? What are you talking about? Uh, Tyreek is here saying, hey, appreciate you kicking the goddamn door in. Oh, Red Lobo, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. Appreciate that, man. Checking you out while I'm at work. Hey, man. Uh, appreciate you pulling me up on a laptop or your phone or whatever you got going on. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things you could be doing, but you decided to kick the door in with me for a minute, and I appreciate stuff like that. So those are the things I'll be thinking about a lot of times when I'm contemplating buying a new knife, getting a new knife. I don't know. And that kind of leads me to some like maintenance stuff I've been doing to my truck lately. Full video is going to be coming out soon. Do you guys drive a truck, an SUV, a car? Let me know in the chat. Like, do you do you take do you own your vehicle until it's until it's completely paid off and you just hold on to it? Because that's what I fucking do. Right. Or are you the type of person that gets a little, you know, you want to take a look and get a get something different. You know what I'm saying? Like, which one are you? Me, personally, I drive my shit to the fucking wheels fall off, Boosie, hey, bro. bro. Come on now, dog. That's it, man. Come on, man. Until the shit, until the goddamn wheels fall off, my shit is being driven, bro. Okay? So, I do have a 2015 uh, GMC Sierra 1500. Mine is... It, I mean, it has the features that I want. I put a diamond back Tanu cover on the back of that thing and now i'm able to just basically keep any and everything in the very back of it that i need to i'm i'm super pleased with the way that it looks i i freaking uh gleam over it and look at it all the goddamn time i take fucking random ass pictures of it all the goddamn time listen my shit is is paid for i don't have any payments and now i'm starting to do some modifications for it okay some modifications i never thought about and I'll be coming out with a video here in the next couple of days. You know, those like the rock chip thing that you put on the hood that kind of helps rocks bounce over your windshield. Put one of those on the front of the truck. I added seat covers to the fucking truck. Like, come on, man. Been having this truck for years. I never fucking put seat covers on it. All sorts of small little mods because I've done big mods. My shit's lifted. The exhaust. I have train horns on it. I have a tonu cover. I have all sorts of big things on it. But I'm trying to like slowly but surely do some incremental actual modifications that are are going to be more aesthetically pleasing for me and things that i enjoy i put the the molly rails in the very back and the bill right industries molly system is fantastic i have all sorts of emergency equipment back there i have all sorts of anything else i might need back there but it just really really works out for exactly what i needed to do anything at the ready at all times and i'm always changing shit around that shovel's no longer back there you know and so i just i'm always contemplating like exactly what do i want to do to to make me stay in exactly where i am right now same thing i think about for everyday carry like should i buy a new knife is the shit that i have now not working do i not know how to sharpen it is it falling apart like why am i thinking about investing in something different like i'm pretty sure for you guys that own guns if it needs maintenance if it's i'm very confident that if your rifle jams and you know you're you're gonna try to do some actual you know figuring out what's wrong with it right or if you have a carbon buildup in your rifle which is dangerous you should clean it but you're not just gonna go run out and buy a new one i don't know maybe you fucking hey, bro, come on now i'm no. not <laughs> come on man but i think about this for 
why are there certain things that we're willing to maintenance and work on? There are other things that we are not. EDC for me, for the knives, multi-tools, flashlights, wallets, all this other shit. If it begins to wear out, fucking learn how to maintenance it. Learn how to finesse it. Learn how to just work it a little bit better because I think it could save you tons of money in the long run. And overall, it's a more enjoyable experience. I use my truck. It's completely paid off. There's a lot of headaches and things that it gives me all the time. I just got done. I, you know, I spent, what did I have? Uh, I was having some grease coming out near my ball joint. I, I don't know what it's called exactly, but my ball joint, where my ball joint sits, there's grease inside of there, right? That helps the tie rod and the ball joints work together or whatever. I started having all this fucking black grease, which is obviously from factory, spilling out all of my goddamn yard. I had to get a whole front axle service and, you know, ball, uh, ball joints, tie rods, everything. And, you know, I, I splurged and spent $1,800. Some of the stuff I did myself, some of the stuff I paid for with a mechanic. And, you know, some folks are like, dude, your truck's from 2015. It came out in 2014. Why don't you just get a fucking new truck? I'm like, man, sir, why don't you just shut the fuck up? My shit works just fine. Mine just works just fine. Got a 2022 Chevy Equinox working on a 87 Chevy R10, though. He pays cash. Did you say you have a... Um, Hold on. I thought I saw... You say you got a Ford, right? Here you go. A Ford... A 2007 Ford F-150. It's my work truck, so I beat on it. New Android Stereo. Listen, there you go. You put something new in there, and it gives you modern feature. Now you got Android Auto. Now you got maps in there. Now your 2007 feels like, oh, okay, I can fuck with this for a lot longer. Me when I was, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. God, hey. We appreciate that, man. But that's a lot of things that folks, I don't know, man. People are just so quick to just give up on some stuff. And me, I'm just like, man, I'm going to freaking rock this thing until the goddamn wheels fall off. This is out here in my freaking hunting property. There's some things that I need my vehicles to be able to do at a minimum. My hunting property, nothing is paid. Once we get near my property, everything becomes gravel. Once I get deep into my property, it's all mud, rocks, hills. So I do need four wheel drive. I do need a higher clearance because there's some creeks that I drive through and stuff like that. But other than that, like there's no reason my truck can't do what these new 2024 vehicles are doing, right? They have way more assistant features. I, I know that. But I mean, you know, this kind of works for me. This kind of works for me. And for me personally, I advocate if you have the ability to to hold on to your stuff a little bit longer and just enjoy it because you never know the different things that you're going to want to be able to do with your vehicles overall. I have packed mine out in like a number of ways, all sorts of ways where I thought, you know, ah, man, maybe if I had something different, I could make this work. Or maybe if I had a different way, let me see if I can find some of the ways I commonly pack my shit out. Oh, I didn't even show you this shit. My truck also has a full uh, air system on it. So this is another like small modification that I did on my truck, but I have the train horns on my truck, but there's also two two gallon tanks and an air compressor on it. I can let air out of my tires, re-air my tires, all sorts of stuff. But these are small things I do to fall in love with my truck all over again. You can do the same thing with your items. You need to fall in love with your knife all over again, buy some new scales. You wanna fall in love with your flashlight all over again, find some type of funky grip for it. You know, you your wallet, carry it more until it starts to patina. There might be different ways for you to avoid always buying new gear, buying new stuff. It, don't get it twisted. You're gonna continue to watch my channel, I hope, okay? But, I would advocate that don't take my channel as the gospel, but as a briefing, as an overview. So when I do finally do a review over this sling bag or if I do a review or anything else, I'll tell you run out and buy this shit. I'm telling you that this is something that I acquired. If you were interested in buying it, this is what it looks like in real life. Right. Not necessarily like you need this shit. Go fucking buy it. No. Nah. Have I gotten the Nikkor EDC 35 says the good. Listen. I don't need the Nikkor EDC 35, but I fucking want the Nikkor EDC 35. Don't get it twisted, bro. 
you know what's so crazy is because Nikkor is doing a trifecta of these EDC flashlights. They have the EDC 33, which is the one that I have. They have the EC 35, which to be candid, Nikkor reached out to me and said, hey, we saw you. Do you want us to send you the 35? I said, no, nah, at this point, I would be gluttonous. So you'd just be sending me some shit to send me some shit. But they did just announce this new Nikkor. I think they call it the TAC Pro or something. Here it is right here. The TMK Pro is just announced. And this TMK Pro is using the same LEDs that are in the Nikkor EDC 35 in the EDC 33, but it's a little bit smaller. And I'm like, oh my gosh, y'all are killing me. I already want uh the in this m2 uh mt2a pro i already want that fucking flashlight and then here you come again with this new tmk pro flashlight like it's hard to not want to run out and buy that type of stuff but i'm gonna hold my horses try not to just get the stuff uh reflexively although it looks extremely interesting if you have the edc 35 what do you think about it are you okay with the bigger size you okay with that bigger size because it is a bigger boy let me see let me look up this tmk tm uh let's see get off my screen what is it called the tm9k so they just announced this on their youtube channel they had the tmk tack and they just came out with the pro which has a different set of leds the same leds that are in the edc 33 and the edc 35 but it's smaller and i'm like i don't know man i kind of like the fact that it's not as big and that having that bulky head at the front that means it's going to fit better in your hand when you have it at a, at a reverse grip so this reverse grip like he's holding it right there it's going to feel your pinky finger a little bit better so i'm kind of liking the way I, i'm kind of fucking with that a little bit um 5000 milliamp hour battery leads me to believe that it has a 21700 inside maybe it's a 18650 i don't really know 557 yard throw i i i like the way this is but i don't fucking need it bro i don't need it i want it though always buy vehicles cash okay makes sense daily driving a 2015 grand cherokee and my project is a 87 comanche so that's a jeep too right both of those are uh, jeeps so you're a jeep boy okay i got you do you do you do the wave I, listen that's one thing i like about jeeps my um my ex-wife father so my former father-in-law he has a jeep he has a jeep gladiator a wrangler he has all sorts of jeeps they get to do that fucking wave when they drive by, have their hands on the front steering wheel and fucking do that wave. I want to do for, why don't GMC Sierras have a fucking wave? Why we, we ain't got no fucking waves. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see. Prepping 2 Endor says I have a 96. Man, that's what I'm saying. I want to get interested in my, one of my buddies has like a 96 or maybe a 95 Jeep. I don't know which one it is exactly, but it's hard because getting into that is a whole nother rabbit hole and habit that i would have to invest in have you seen the code of bell x pod 2 field trip i don't even know what that is red lobo let's see code of bell x pod aha is a sling bag huh so code of bell is a is a brand x pod 2 is a sling and we're jumping into this at 149 dollars oh my god boosie hey, bro come on now dog come on man is it 149 because Carryology gave them some type of reward for this shit here's some things that i'll see about it that looks dope but here's the thing when i see stuff like this and i see prices like this and immediately i start thinking about competitors man so this is the Code of Bell X Pod 2 for $149. It looks like, what are the specs on this thing? How many liters is it? It's not jumping out at me. So you can get it in black, you can get it in, uh, they have a number of colors. All right, I like the green, but I, the question that I have is the functionality of this sling. Is it much more different where I need to pay five times the amount? Is it much more different where I need to pay five times the amount? It looks like it's big enough to hold a full size water pot bottle, an umbrella. It expands. You can put a jacket inside. It has a, a, st a stabilization clip. 
all sorts of little features in it, right? Cordura fabric on the inside, X-Pack. I mean, this shit is getting grandpa excited. But $149 with a super secret pocket on the side, all sorts of stuff, okay? Inatech sent me their sling. Inatech sent me their sling. It looks grossly similar to this one. Grossly similar to this one. I think it's like 40 bucks. And I tested it out. Now it's made of polyester. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, right? But let me tell you something. If you're looking for the functionality, you're not always out in the rain. Then the stylish crossbody sling by Inatech for me personally was a banger. This thing cost $46.99. This thing holds a water bottle. It holds a freaking umbrella. It's This thing is humongous. Okay, so it's made of 900D polyester. It has a glossy film finish. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It had a really good clip to be such a budget price at 46 bucks. If it's also like this umbrella, don't get it twisted. If it it's a full size 24 ounce water bottle in there easily, it has like a whole slip pocket, iPad mini, all that shit. So should I buy something like this with nice YKK zippers? You can add some actual pools on there. Or should I spend $150 on something that maybe gives me a little bit more because it expands? I don't know if that other sling was worth three times the price of this sling. That's just me looking at that, right? Because when I go back and I look at the X-Pod, I don't know if this is three times the price. I don't know the sizing of it. It's not like apparent on their website. I wish it was more clearly listed. I'll have to, oh, so it's 2.5 liters and it expands to seven liters. Okay, so you get the expansion. This is like, okay, I guess if you want the expansion, it's worth, it just looks so bulky. I don't know, man. It looks interesting, Red Lobo. Me personally, I don't think I could leverage the $150. If you're a traveler, this looks like this is gonna be a good bag for you. So imagine that you are in freaking, you know, the Canary Islands, you're in Portugal, you're in goddamn Lincoln, Nebraska, you're in, you can get to go see Mount Rushmore. You go to the Mount Rushmore, you, you buy some trinkets and souvenirs there that are too big for your sling. This might be worth it because it, it can expand to seven liters or you go to Niagara Falls. I went to Niagara Falls a few years ago. While I was there, I walked into Canada and it began to rain. I bought a raincoat, bought a poncho. So I had to now carry this poncho around. It would have been nice to stick it in my bag. At the time, it, my bag was too small. Okay, this might solve that issue. But am I going to spend three times? In, I don't know. I don't know. Especially when there's packable duffels that they sell. Matador makes a freaking goaded packable duffel that you can buy and stick in your sling bag and it literally folds all the way down. Now this is 85 bucks, but this thing folds all the way down into a super small hand size duffel. Let me see if they, this, look how small this thing gets to. I keep this duffel in my travel bag. And when I go places and I accidentally buy too many souvenirs, right? So say for I go to Washington DC, I buy my kids t-shirts and shit. I can expand this to 30 liters and put it in my check luggage or whatever. I would rather buy the Inatech and this thing and still spend less money and have a packable option. And this thing can fit in your Inatech sling. So Cole Bell, I like what y'all are trying to do with this, but uh, I don't know, man. There's just so many other options out there. I have experience with this one. I have the Inatech sling. So it's kind of hard for me to justify that. But you know, I appreciate you pointing that out real level. Um, 07 Lexus IS350. Oh my God. I had a buddy had an IS350 when I was in the Marines. It was 2010 and he had a 08 Lexus. Man, that thing was so sexy to me, bro. That shit was just, I was like, God, he's going to get all the vagina. That car's so goddamn nice. Oh, he got the vibes in here. No one waves at me in my Comanche. But those who know always honk or ask me a question. Okay, that makes sense. A 2006 Chevy Silverado, a cat eye. Oh, man. I have Gen. So technically, my Sierra is what? Gen 3, Gen 2? The 2015s, I think, are Gen 3. But yeah, listen, my shit works just fine. The five, Here's the issue with Chevy 
and with with Chevy overall, that 5.3 V8 that they put in those vehicles are so they're so easy to work on that it's hard to justify getting another one. Especially if I get a new truck, it needs to have a different engine. Either I want a 6.6 liter uh, 2500, so it looks like a diesel, but it's not. So I want a 6.6 liter gasser. Or, you know, I would even go smaller. I would get like a V6 from Ford because they have some fantastic V6s that they're pumping out nowadays. So it just depends. I'd rather get the snack time at that price. Yeah, and then you could flare it up with the hook and loop on the front. It has a different color interior. He says, never mind, I would get the $50 one. Yeah, that in a text sling, I did a budget, um, I did a budget carry on my channel. I don't remember how long ago. A budget sling, but it, I did a, a review on the in a text sling. I only carried this sling for two weeks. I was testing it out. During that two weeks, I wasn't missing anything. I wasn't like, oh my God, if I only had my nutsack. Oh my God, if I only had my alpaca. I never had those thoughts when I carried the in a tech. Now those other bags are much nicer, but yeah. So check out the Maritech Cosmos. All right, field trip. Let's see what we got here real quick. The Maritech Cosmos. So this is a flashlight by <clears throat> County Com. County Com's puts out some unique products. Okay. I can appreciate that $95. I like that first picture. Good job with the first photo. The mini LEP Cosmos 1450 battery is what I'm assuming what that is. What are the lumens on this? So it's a 200 uh, max lumen outputs kind of low 260 lumens. That's like a triple a battery size. I mean, this is a decent flashlight. It's stronger than your cell phone. It's going to keep your wife from falling her face in a movie theater. You're going to be able to find the shit that falls under the couch. You're going to be able to, if you drop something at your desk and it's near your ankle and you're, and you're using your phone for Spotify, you can pull this out of your pocket. I'm giving you scenarios I use my flashlights for, right? But when I'm walking a tree line, this is not going to work for me, right? If I'm walking a dog and I need to illuminate a tree line because I think there's a bobcat, this is not going to work for me. Um, it, or is there a different version that I missed? Let me see. Now this one's $220. Oh, this one's titanium, but I think it still does the same output, right? Yeah, still 260 lumen output. So this is a great EDC flashlight, meaning like small everyday carry shit. You want to be the hero and find something underneath the bed or behind the entertainment system or did your kids throw something behind the toy box or were you trying to find a dirty diaper that you're not sure exactly where it's at edc hero that's what this is right but i i think it because it's the lep i think because of the brand i think i've heard of meritech before it's gonna have a decent throw what's the throw on this 260 feet half a mile throw that's a pretty decent throw I guess I'm just thinking about, can I illuminate a tree line to scare off a bobcat, scare off a coyote when I'm walking my neighborhood at night? If I go rucking at night, you know, that's those are the things I think about when I'm rucking at night. Can this flashlight illuminate far enough ahead of me? I think this might be able to do it. Now, the light is visible for 25 miles by others. That's interesting. 25 miles by others. That's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, the $95 price for the non-titanium version seems more interesting than this one. But I'm not a big fan of titanium much of anything. I have one titanium, a knife that has a little, a pinch of titanium in it. Let me grab it for you because this might be one where I'm like, okay, finally, finally, hold on. Shout out to uh, Jared over there, Neves Nice man. He knows that I'm not a big fan of titanium. He knows that if I spend over $150 on a knife, I want to be able to open it in more than one way. And so he said, hey, let me get your address. I want to send you some stuff. So he ended up sending me the Wee Knife Nitro. Now this knife, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a fucking panty dropper. It's pretty nice. Okay, it has my Carter scales, but it has black titanium as well. It has a bolster lock, which is like a 
more beautiful frame lock in my opinion titanium hardware on there it's not doesn't look left hand friendly but i'm right handed so does it really matter but i mean this thing here is going to allow you to um use a flipper <clears throat> you can use the thumb studs it has cpm 20 cv blade steel it's really really nice it's like 267 dollars. this is the type of knife i would never purchase for myself probably right i just probably wouldn't do it not not anymore and i've spent big money on bench maids and stuff like that but I, I haven't spent big money on a knife when i say big money i mean more than 150 dollars on a knife i haven't spent more than 150 dollars on a knife in over a year and a half so shout out to Nice for sending this to me because i've actually quite enjoyed it but i like the fact that it does have like a premium like like it almost feels like wood so it's pretty good um I like I like the way that this looks overall. This is something that will make me want to carry titanium because it's not aggressive with it. The spacer is like, oh, it's just a, overall it's really nice. I really, I want to take it apart and just to kind of see what the inner workings of it are like. I've never had a bolster lock knife. It reminds me of a liner lock, but obviously it's not that. But um, so this is a decent premium knife. But once again, it's like it's getting me CPM 20 CV blade still. And this knife costs a hundred dollars more than the knife that I have in my pocket, which is the Hogue Decker. So it's like the Hogue Decker is also getting me a CPM 20 CV blade still. They probably have near the same HRC. They're both coated. They both have the same. Um, well, obviously this is a crossbar lock on the Hogue Decker, or they call the Able Lock. It's left hand friendly. I like the G10 scales on the Hogue Decker. I'm not gonna lie to you. I like that it costs less money. You're kind of getting the same. Uh, you're kind of getting the same with the blade still action so it's kind of like should i spend almost a hundred dollars more on the wee knife uh, i don't know and i don't know if the wee knife if this specific wee knife is made in america this whole deck is made in america so that's also something to think about right you know that's also something to think about as well i don't know he says uh don't fight it x hop on the titanium train summer is coming sir i don't know man i don't know if you're going to be able to pull me that way okay I like when they contour to my card. I like when they contour any of the any composite material. So G10, micarta, polymer, grivery. I like when they contour it with the metal. I always like the way that looks. I have four sevens quirk pro model for eight years and it hasn't failed me yet. Field trip. I don't know what the fuck that is, sir. Thanks for kicking the door in. Let's see. Four sevens. Quirk Pro. That's a long name. That is a long name. Let's see if we can find it real quick. Okay. Looks like... Um, oh, this thing's been out since 2013. So I see why you've had it for so long. It's not even for sale anymore on Amazon. Yeah, it's no longer available. Um, interesting. So on Amazon, it's no longer available doesn't have the best ratings on amazon but that's fucking amazon some people leave bad ratings if they have a bad shipping experience so sometimes i don't go off of that but if we go off of knife center how much did they used to have it listed for so it's discontinued everywhere but i mean it's beamed down in your pocket it doesn't look like a horrible flashlight it's beamed down in your pocket 780 lumens max output for 60 seconds so that's its, its version of a turbo mode and what is it's working? It has a moonlight mode. I don't know what the moonlight mode is, but whatever, as long as it has a decent working mode. Oh, look at that moonlight mode of a half a lumen. Oh, that's phenomenal. Half a lumen for 25 days. It looks like the working mode is 55 lumens. The medium is 55. So 55 lumens is decent to check a uh, circuit breaker box, do a little bit of light work on a compressor. You have a high lumen mode of 300 which I don't really ever need 300 lumens. And then you got a burst of 780. And then it walks itself down to 390. So it can go 780 lumens for a minute and it walks itself down to 390 lumens for up to an hour, up to two hours. That's not bad. 
that's not horrible this seems like did this does this company not make flashlights anymore or is this this specific one discontinued looks like they still make flashlights let's see no they don't that sucks that sucks at least they don't sell them on knife center anymore at least they don't sell them on knife center anymore hey benjamin thanks for kicking the goddamn door and hopefully all is well with you i'm about to switch out my brass carry soon it's hoodie season now wait where are you at it's becoming hoodie season for you because here in texas it is like watch my wife walk around in goddamn booty short season you hear what i'm saying baby it's biker short season have you seen mrs x <laughs> My loadout changes when I upgrade some things. I don't do style sets. I, you know, mine is just really about what I'm feeling. So like if I have a capability of doing heavy maintenance on my items, I might be willing to spend more money on something or spend less money on something that requires more maintenance. So maybe I get a 14 C28 in knife that requires me to sharpen it more because I have a really nice knife sharpener. Or maybe I have no knife sharpener and I buy a knife from a brand that sh offers free sharpening. Like, you know, tactile knives will sharpen your knife for five bucks. Benchmade will sharpen your knives for free. Send them in. If you get a messed up washers and shit like that, the experience I've had with Benchmade, I'll tell them I had a washer just all jacked up or my hardware stripped. They just fucking throw the shit in the mail and send it to me. So sometimes you spend your money on where you want to, you know. Uh, what is a good duty flashlight? I do security. Oh, hands down, a good duty flashlight that I've been experiencing lately, Red Lobo, is the EDC line from Nikkor. Nikkor EDC 33, Nikkor EDC 35. Because you do security, I would probably go for the bigger 35, but they have this Lumen Shield technology. Basically, when you turn the flashlight on, if you have it in high mode and it notices an object's too close to it, it automatically brings the beam down. So if it turns on in your pocket, you won't burn your pocket up, right? It also has this aggressive spot beam on it. Let me go get it. Let me just show it to you. So I think for security purposes, you wanna be able to have a good spot beam and you need the beam to go far because you might be checking a corridor and a corridor might be a hundred feet and you as a security person doesn't want to walk down and get crept up on. So if you look over my shoulder, right, this is a, a streamlight wedge. Streamlight wedge has more of a floodlight, right? But if we look at the Nikkor EDC 33, this has more of a spot. Oh my God, I fucking love this flashlight. But it has more of a spot and it has a fantastic high, uh, high beam mode and overall the flashlight itself has a great locking system you can like lock it out very easily but even when it's locked you can choose to turn it back on it has a great metal build to it like this flashlight is just one of those flashlights you can use while you're doing security but you can also use it in your personal edc so for me from my personal use case this is the flashlight i take with me when i don't know what's about to happen you know i'm going it might be a tree line bobcat shit like that I grabbed the EDC 35, 33, excuse me. That's kind of my go-to. So, you know, this is kind of really depends. It says I'm in Amsterdam. It's supposed to be 75 degrees tomorrow. Aha, I got you. They're in the Northern Hemisphere too, though. So they're entering spring, right? Folks in Southern Hemisphere, the ones that are about to get freaking molested with the goddamn winter. It's far too tempting to build an aesthetically cohesive carry. I do it all the time. My carry today is copper and brass, but I don't, it's not a must do. I do it even with like with my desks, right? This desk that I'm sitting up is for live streaming and I, I edit vertical content and also work my day job here sometimes. But I want it to be like aesthetically pleasing. I have a nice keyboard, a nice mouse, a nice armrest. They all match. They make me feel good. So I sit down and I actually do work. So if you have a cohesive carry that makes you want to carry your items, then maybe you just want to do shit like that. Same thing with my main editing setup. My main editing setup has, you know, a, a black and white uh, keyboard, the mouse matches, the, all the aesthetics are right, right? And all that good stuff. 
so it just really depends the light uh the light better than the bigger stream light cops carry that light better no it's not better it's not better you're thinking about something like like a bigger stream light like this one here this was the this is the stream light um Protec H5X. I don't know how big of a light you want. This is a 3500 lumen output light. I mean, this one's way better than the one I just showed you, but it's freaking humongous. I mean, you have to clip this to the outside of your body. The EDC 33, you can put that in your pocket. So if we look at this, I mean, this one's way, and I don't even have it on high lumen mode right now. So, you know, that's the, the big flashlight here. And then we come here, so this one is gonna have a better spot beam with this cop flashlight. The EDC 33 has a more acute spot beam. It just really depends. But both of them are, I mean, the size difference is, is freaking ridiculous, right? So it's like, which one do you really wanna have to fuck with all the time? So the, it's, it's an aggressive size difference. You gotta just think about, this is the type of flashlight I have my oh shit handle. I get into a car accident, I pull out and I wanna inspect the bumper and see whose fault it is, shit like that. I take this camping stuff like that right so it just really depends but it's not i wouldn't say better now i would not say better uh gotta go hey man i appreciate you kicking the goddamn door matter of fact i need to get ready to wrap it up as well too i gotta go pick up some kids from uh daycare and all of that good stuff man i gotta bounce myself up out of here man <laughs> All of that good stuff, man. I appreciate y'all stopping by. Nice guy, B1. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. We appreciate you, man. We will speak soon.